was slashed, the, the price of the pounds was slashed. It was a dire state for Singapore. Look what you said, you know what, with leadership, we can turn this country around. Just a fishing island was turned into a trading hub, a financial hub. Capitals, I mean, world banks, banks, big banks in the world, HSBC and the likes of the rest have their uh, Asian hub in Singapore, Hong Kong. See how those people built something. Taiwan started because of the, the reformists in China had a squabble, so some of the communists had to go start up Taiwan. See how great the Taiwanese economy has grown. See Korea, see Japan. In the space of a hundred years, social mobility in Japan changed. Hmm. See this country. Hmm. But what, what are we doing here? We're, 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 we're playing. It's, we're yeah, treating the yeah, issues with like kid we gloves. You know, uh -huh. we're not... And it's so easy. And, and you know what? If we put all our hands on deck, we'll not have to go through what Singapore went through. It's not a dire country. It's a country that has a lot of potential. And until we start looking at this, then we, we won't scream that, Eureka. That, that's what you're saying here, that look, why, this is not rocket science. Building it's a not. country with all the many challenges, with all the many problems of building a country, it's not really rocket science because the examples are all over there for yeah. us to look at yeah. and copy. The willingness of heart. Leak where you came to Nigeria in the 60s. The things he said about Nigerian leader, trust me, I don't want to say them on the TV. That's still the same things we had. A lot of tribalism, no sense of direction. Because he came, he came to Nigeria. He wanted to meet with the British Prime Minister, Harold Wilson. So Harold Wilson was in Nigeria, so when he came. He came to Nigeria in the 60s. The things he saw, he was here to learn, but the things he saw are still the things that are prevalent Which now. Which he stated in his, uh, in his book, yes, yeah, so, third world to first world. Yeah. So those are the R things really we should look at and learn. I mean, it doesn't take much to build a country. It just needs that genuine heart, a sense of direction. I mean, where does Nigeria want to be in the first 20 or 50 years? Because we're about to exhaust this millennium now. Well, Jeffrey Sachs brought about Millennium Development Goals with the UN for the first uh, 10 years after we have Sustainable Development Goals another couple of years. After that, by 2030, where do we want to be in science and technology? Teaching of science, technology, engineering, and maths. It's appalling. The rate of primary school completion has reduced. Formerly, it used to be 65%. Now, it's less than 55%. 55% of the population does not finish primary school. A child born in Nigeria has a 5% chance to go to university. A child born in the OECD country has an 80% chance to go to university. Mm. And you want to compete? No quality schools. No quality education. That's who's a strike every single time. There are challenges in society we need to look at. And it doesn't take much to fix a country. Hmm. It doesn't take much. Let me, let me read something you wrote here. Um, I think page 29. This is not only an attempt, the book. Yeah. It's not, only a, it's not only an attempt to retrace our steps as a nation, but the science of understanding human evolution and charting the coordinates for the future based on historical occurrences. You know, you said many things in your book, but that kept hitting me that why are we not learning from, it's so easy, why are we not copying, learning from other countries, um, which is what you said here. Um, because we choose not to learn. Because we choose not to learn. Yeah, because, because we choose not to learn. Is I mean, that a leadership problem? It, it's, so, it, it's the leadership that permeates into the followership. Because we choose not to learn. And I'll give you an instance. Um, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, the former the Secretary of Defense in America, used the great term, known unknowns, known knowns. There's some things we know and we don't know. So uh, here in Nigeria, it's unknown unknown. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't know and we don't want to know. And that's why you see the problem. And the leadership over the years, I'll quote Greg Mills on this. Why Africa, is Why Africa is poor? If you read the first chapter, I said because the leadership choose to make Africa poor. That's what Greg Mill says. That's why Africa is poor. That's why Africa is poor. And the leadership choose to make intellectual poverty first dominant in Africa. That's what you see. Out of the universities in the world, you can see an African university rank first 1,000 or first 500 or first 10 in the world because it's a deliberate attempt. I'll shock you. History wasn't taught in school for so many years. Yeah. So how would the people learn? Yeah. I mean, they took history out of the curriculum of schools in a country like this. But surprisingly, wasn't um, Timbuktu 
Yeah, uh, um, th there's this book. The Hub. Uh, th what's, what's the title of that book? The, the Intellectual Disposition of Timbuktu by, by Robin Walker, Professor Robin Walker. Uh, Excellent book. Was that the first university? In, yeah, in, in St. Cory University, 1541. A family mosque turned, a family turned their family mosque into a university. It was the hub for learning. That's why Timbuktu grew. That's why you had Mansa Musa. Because anywhere education goes, there's enlightenment. There's enlightenment. But how will Nigeria grow as a country where less than 50% of young people finish primary schools? Do you know what that means? Primary school, primary one to six. That's a disaster. Less than 50% finish primary school. That's a disaster. Another book you should read is Imagine Africa by uh, Kinsley Morgalu. Yeah. You know, Morgan, great yeah. man. I'm, I'm sure you've had him on the show. Yeah. No, no, not on the show yet. Yeah. Looking forward to doing that. Yeah, great, great mind. Great man. Yeah. I mean, how would you grow? How would you grow? So those are the challenges we see. Mm. And except we try to change this, then, then we're not going anywhere. Mm. You wrote again uh, questions we need to deal with. Questions relating to the nature and efficiency of a political system which needs to be upright yeah. for true social reforms to be implemented. Questions on our understanding of governance and the balance between self and public interest. Even though that was not your primary topic, leadership. But I sensed that you were really talking about leadership indirectly here. You have to talk about leadership. It's leadership that drives all those things. It drives it? everything. It, mm -hmm. It's the coordinate. And, and it hurts me that what is supposed to be the most important thing in this country is what we play with the most. Leadership. Look at our elections. We play around at elections. I mean, 2019 is coming again. We think it's a joke. Voter apathy is even low. That's why I said the people to share the blame. 15% or 20% of the population vote. So we need to take leadership seriously. The process of getting leaders, we need to have more accountable, accountability. You know, there need to be reform in the system. Electoral reforms, strong electoral reforms. These are things we should look at. Mm. Rufai, there's a lot to talk about. Um, very enlightening book. Something, you know, every leader, political leader particularly, should read. But everybody, every Nigerian should read. Um, thank you for joining us on Thank Channel you so Club. much. And keep churning them out. Thank uh, you so much. Looking forward to it. I mean, another one is coming out soon. Very good. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah.